and we have been blessed with spectacular weather, 59 degrees, humidity at only 39%, a slight wind out of the northwest, and a forecast for continued sunny skies this afternoon. Hello, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist. We have a Tampa Bay team that comes in with a 3-3 three and three record. They're young and very improved, and they have lost two of those three games in the final minute of play. My partner again today is Terry Bradshaw. Terry, this is a Tampa Bay team that is unfamiliar with Washington. What will be the key for them today? I always believe that it's important for, to have your quarterbacks play and play at top level. And Vinny Testaverde missed the Detroit Lion game last week, and Joe Ferguson uh, uh, did a fine job. But the one thing that Joe does not bring to the offense that Testaverde does, Vern, is that Testaverde has the ability to face the pressure and scramble out. Now, he has a bad knee, missed the game because of a knee. Today, very important, he remain in the game, and we see whether or not early enough, when the pressure is applied, whether he has the ability to get out of the pocket and to throw on the run. It's very important today that Testaverde play and play well. The Washington Redskins come in like uh, Tampa Bay 3-3. Three and three. They are 11 points from being 6-0. and oh. This has been a very serious Washington team. What's important for them today? When you look at the heart and soul of a football team, one that's been great like the Washington Redskins, the first thing you'd look at here is their running game. Today, let's just get it out on the line. The Washington Redskins must run the football and run it effectively. I'm talking a bunch. And if they do that, then look for Rippon to come out and play action. Let's understand this. The number one safety, the guy Harry Hamilton of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a leading interceptor in the National Football League, he's out of this football game. If the game plan goes accordingly, just the way the Redskins want it, they'll run, and then Rippon will play action and look for him to test those safeties early, possibly to the post. Tampa Bay has not fared all that well against the NFC East, of whom the Washington Redskins are a part. 7-23 and 23 over the uh, history of the franchise. They have never won a game on the road against an NFC Eastern Division foe. Tampa Bay has won the toss. Chip Lowmiller will kick off. Futrell and Elder are the deep backs. This will be Donnie Elder at the two. A.J. Johnson knocks him down at the 20-yard line. The rookie out of Southwest Texas State, number 47. Vinny Testaverde out last week, much improved this year. Only five interceptions through the five games he has played. And getting his first start ever at RFK Stadium, joined by Paul Gruber, Mike Simmons, the veteran Randy Grimes at center, John Bruin and Rob Taylor on the right side. And a hampered tight end, Ron Hall. In the backfield, Lars Tate and William Howard. Carrier and Hill, the wide receivers. Peebles and Drury on passing circumstances. Lars Tate out of the backfield. Testaverde will throw on first down. Has a player in his face as he lets it go. Intended for Bruce Hill. It was incomplete. Second down and ten. Defensively for the Redskins, Tracy Rocker, the rookie out of Auburn, gets his first start today, replacing Marcus Cook. That is in part because of Cook's injury. Grant and Manley also there. Caldwell, Greg Minuski gets his second start. And in the backfield, Davis, Green, Bowles, and Walton, A.J. Johnson, and Barry Wilburn come in on nickel and dime plays. Three wide receivers set for the Buccaneers. Testaverde, three-step drop. Left side, caught by Hill. Knocked out of bounds by Alvin Walton at the five-yard line. You're going to see a lot of three-step drop by Testaverde. One of the things, though, as this game goes on, Vern, you will see Testaverde go to the seven-step drop, and that will depend primarily, the seven-step drop with, will be, depend primarily on how well Simmons and Bruin hold out the tackles of the Redskins. If they hold them out, then Testaverde will drop deep and then throw the ball deep. Four wide receivers now on third and five. James Wilder comes into the backfield, the veteran running back. Testaverde goes for Wilder in the middle, one-handed catch at the 42-yard line. Wilder, who has taken a subservient role now as the years wind on for him. He's in his ninth year. And a nice one-handed grab for a gain of 17. A lot of left to your screen. 32 is Wilder. This man has always been an outstanding receiver. You notice he gets inside of Coleman, 90 Coleman, 51, loses him, and then Wilder with a great one-handed grab. Ball at the 42, first and 10, and a three-wide receiver set on first down. Oh, 
Chris Tiverti, Daryl Grant. That is Grant's third sack of the year, the quiet one who plays at the right tackle spot. Tackles very seldom make a lot of sacks, not primarily with this Redskin team because they're not allowed to. They're play, they play two gap, but Grant inside playing tackle gets by his men and breaks the pocket down. And if you break the pocket down with a deep defensive tackle, then you force the quarterback out into your end and they get the sacks. Wilbur Marshall hurries onto the field defensively. He gets there in time. Don Smith in the lineup now for the Buccaneers offensively. Testaverde with some pressure. Pulls it up, finds the receiver down the left side. It's Don Smith, number 47. He's got a first down at the 20. No flags on the play. Although that was a great play by Testaverde, Vern, of getting out of the pocket. He brings the ability to move out and run and throw on the run. But one thing I noticed that once he delivered this football, his leg is hurting. He does not have the ability. Watch this now. He gets outside. Notice how he's hobbling. Notice. But a good job now of picking his eyes upfield, picks out his receiver, and after he threw the ball once again, he was hurt. That's a gain of 45 yards. Now 12 men lined up on the defense. Penalty is declined. Second down. Well, the irony there is that the 12th man was Wilbur Marshall, who hurried onto the field late and was the man who was beaten on that 45-yard gain. First down and 10 at the 21 on Don Smith's third catch of the year. Now regular set on first and ten. Testaverde across the middle, drop. Bruce Hill couldn't hang on. Charles Mann with pressure from the left side. Mann is someone that the Buccaneers are going to have to pay a lot of attention to. Right now, it looks like it's just a matchup between Rob Taylor, the right tackle for the Buccaneers. He's man for man on man. Now, what will happen, there'll be a changeup, and what the Buccaneers will have to do to slow down Mann is either put a back over to help out Taylor or to go to two tight ends. Second and 10 for the 21. No score. Draw play, nothing doing. Lars Tate, number 34, tackle made by Tracy Rocker. There's Rocker, the number one draft choice out of Auburn. Actually, a third round choice, but the top pick for the Redskins. Yeah, the Outland Trophy winner, and I was surprised, Vern, that a player, a tackle, that wins the Outland Trophy winner. Normally, you would think it would be a high draft choice, the top 15 players chosen, but this man, for some reason, the book out on him was not that favorable and all the way down to the third round, and now the Redskins are giving him a chance for his first start today. Third and 13. Stunts defensively. Testaverde, incomplete. Intended for Mark Carrier. It'll be fourth down, and Donald Igwe Buike will come on. Now, the pass rush that time did not get to Testaverde, but it had an effect on him because each time he had thrown the ball earlier in this drive, he had been hit and driven to the ground. And that time, Vinny dropped back and anticipated and said, whoop, I'm not going to have enough time. And he threw the ball when he indeed had plenty of time to set and, dry, and drill the football in there. Donald Igwe Buike is 10 of 11 this year. The one miss came from 46. This will be a 41-yard effort. Now a protracted contract hold out in training camp. It's blocked. for the year and Terry Orr the captain of the special teams was in the middle of things well let's watch see what happens normally you try to stay solid on the inside but Orr gets down and leaps and lunges and he anticipated the area where the football would be going once it was kicked and got his hand on it and blocked it what I don't understand is why Coleman didn't pick it up and run with it here and his special teams came through then as Terry Orr got the first Washington block field goal this year. First one since the Dallas game last season, the second Dallas game. Left side, Gerald Riggs with a 
30-yard line. As Mark Rippon leads the Washington offense out. Rippon, the third-year man from Washington State. Sacked only five times uh, this year and intercepted only five times. And offensively up front, he's got the Hogs. Lachey, Grimm, Bostick, May, Jacoby, and Warren. Riggs, Art Monk, Ricky Sanders, and Gary Clark with the three wide receivers. Sanders out and Ernest Miner in on this play. And here's Gerald Riggs going right. Back to the 35-yard line. Good for a first down. Well, Terry, first two plays, they have run it and run it effectively. Defensively for Tampa Bay, Reuben Davis, Kurt Jarvis, and Robert Pig Goff. Kevin Murphy, Gene Marv, Irvin Randall, and Winston Moss are the four stops. That's a big name. And in the backfield, Reynolds, Jones, Robinson, Odie Harris, Sherman Cocroft, and Donnie Elder. Nickel and Don, defensive backs, respectively. Clark and Sanders, along with Riggs. Quick clip left side, Ricky Sanders. And he's got the ball out to the 34-yard line before Mark Robinson makes the tackle. Yeah, one of the real problems these young defensive backs for Tampa will have, Vern, is when is when motion uh, is, is run by the Washington Redskins, and if no one runs with the motion back, then that'll tell Rippon that it's a zone defense. And then if he'll look out and notice the corners are off, they'll run that little hitch. That's a read. If the corner's off, then the Sanders comes out, he reads them off, just turns around and makes a hit. Second and two, double tight end set. Don Warren goes to the right side now with Mike Tice. Backs in the eye, that's Finer. He's in motion. And Riggs with the handoff. That would be close for the first down at the 45. May not have made it. We'll see. Gerald Riggs, who had that huge game earlier in the year against Philadelphia, only the fumble at the end of the game, and has not had a good month since then, but had 91 yards last week. He's not been over 100 since that outstanding effort, the second game of the season. There's Gerald Riggs. Third, and less than a yard. No score in the ball game. 9.09 to go, first quarter. Defensive effort on third and short, and the Redskins have been having problems this year on third and one and two. They have not been that effective. It's amazing. I think they've only been successful something like nine out of 25 times in third and one situations. And the key was pick golf number 94 as he penetrated, and the key in short yardage defense, eight for 19 as you look at it. The key is penetration. Goff penetrated, got in the backfield, and stopped Riggs. So on fourth down, here's Ralph Mozienko, who's got a bad left ankle, and that's not a pretty kick. But it gets a heck of a red skin roll. Willie Drury will try to return it. But he goes lateral and is knocked out of bounds. And again, the special teams play for the Redskins comes into effect. That's a 48-yard punt. Three on the return for Drury. And Tampa has the ball. Grimes, one of the best centers in the NFL of the Buccaneers, has an unusual technique in snapping the ball. He puts his thumb on the laces. Terry, most centers don't do that. No, most centers grip it with their fingers on the laces. And when I asked Grimes, or when we talked to him, he said, I do this because it's best for me. And I thought, whoa, that's that's good stuff. It's good for the center. The heck with Testa Verde, he can make the adjustment. Notice the thumb on the seam. Isn't that amazing? Right on the laces. There's the handoff to William Howard. That's good for a gain out to the 14. Now, what, what problems might that unusual centering technique cause the quarterback? Well, Vern, not really. It, it really doesn't cause any problem because what Vinny Testaverde does is just take the snap and then rolls the, the ball and rolls the laces to his fingers. That's all, you know. Normally, most centers snap the ball and the laces are already placed on the fingers. That's what Mike Webster did with you. Exactly. Second down and seven. by Testaverde, he fires incomplete. Intended for Ron Hall. No score here, 7.44 to go first quarter. Let's find out what's going on elsewhere. Here's Brent. 
Well, Vern, Dan Marino has thrown his ninth touchdown pass of the season. Keep in mind that he also has 11 interceptions, so he struggled just a bit. He hits his favorite target, Jensen. That's Jensen's third touchdown of the year, seven yards out. They lead the pack by seven. Back to Vern. All right, Brent, no score here. 7.44 to go first quarter. James Wilder comes into the backfield. Third and seven, four wide receiver set. For that defense in, no blitz. Testaverde across the middle for Carrier. Makes the catch short of the first down at the 20-yard line. And Vinny Testaverde got dumped by Dexter Manley. Testaverde going into the shotgun. And Ray Perkins admitted to us that one of the problems that they caused, they, the offensive coaches caused Testaverde, was they were asking him to get into the shotgun and then throw short passes, which means that, Vern, very simply, he's so deep that once he takes the snap from center, the quick routes are run, he's late with the passes. This year, when Vinny gets into the shotgun, he's throwing the football down the field, 10 yards, 15 yards. Joe Howard will return it. Last week, Darrell Green came in for a moment to return punts, and uh, as he said yesterday, you know it's serious when I'm back there again, so Joe Howard right now. Great high punt by Chris Moore. Way up in the air. Howard at the 36. Oh. And he's down at the 41-yard line by Donnie Elder. Chris Moore scraped the clouds with that 47-yard punt. Five on the return. And the Redskins have good field position. 6.41 to go first quarter. Vern Lundquist, Terry Bradshaw at RFK. No score in the ball game. The Redskins have it now. First down at the 43. One field goal attempt blocked by Terry Orr. Igwe Buque's kick is blocked. Art Monk starts in motion. Griffin, Gary Clark. And he is out of bounds, tackled by Rod Jones. Gary Clark who, uh, take a look at this, is wearing black shoes that are taped over. Now, in warm-ups, he was wearing just black shoes. There's a fine for wearing the black shoes during a game. Ricky Reynolds wore his black shoes for Tampa Bay last week, returned the touchdown, 68 yards, and changed his shoes today because he was threatened with a $500 fine by the league. Riggs dunked. Yeah. You know, the... Rod Jones. To support what you're saying, Vern, the, the league has a dress code where everyone on the team has to dress the same. So in other words, it's not the fine against the black shoes. It's that someone else has, the majority of the players have white shoes. So if you all wear white shoes, no problem. But if one guy wears black shoes, then the letter came from the league office, and the first fine is for 500. The second fine, it just continues to escalate. We had a player named named uh, L.C. Greenwood who wore yellow shoes his entire career. Imagine the fine. Nothing, total that money up. That, that's over 100 grand. Who paid it? Uh, Dan Rooney. We were winning. Third and six. Sanders in motion. Delayed five-man rush. That's dropped by Ernest Viner and would have been a first down at the 49-yard line. And it brings up fourth down. Gary Clark is way down at the 10-yard line, and there is no one anywhere near him, and Rippon never had a chance to see him. There's Gary Clark. He, should, he, he looked back and said, hey, I taped up my black shoes. Nobody saw me. I'm down here. Well, the read for Rippon was short first, then deep, and Biner came open for the first down. He had to stay within his lead. Clock, clock. Picked up by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ricky Reynolds with his white shoes. No flags down. Touchdown, his second in as many weeks. Ricky Reynolds thought that the black shoes were bringing him luck. That's been dispelled now as the white shoes, as Vern, as you said, have certainly come through. From the outside, Ricky Reynolds blocked the punt, scoops up his own block, and now picks up a caravan of one, two, three, four Tampa Bay Buccaneers as they escort him down for the touchdown. Last week, 68 yards with an interception, his first NFL touchdown. And now, 
33 yards with the block punt return for a touchdown. The extra point is good. And Ricky Reynolds out of Washington State with his second touchdown in as many weeks. Now, there might be a problem for Ricky Reynolds because his wife's here. And now he might feel like she's the good luck charm, and now he's going to have to fly her all over the country for all these football games. If that's going to help him play like that, maybe Mr. Coverhouse, he'll, he'll foot the bill. Last week's Miller Lite NFL Player of the Week was Rodney Peake, making him eligible to be Player of the Year. Look for the next winner in Wednesday's USA Today and at the end of the season for the Miller Lite NFL Player of the Year. Ricky Reynolds, number 29, with a block. His grandfather, Henry, just had a major operation in a hospital in Sacramento, California on Friday. And Ricky asked us to pass on his best wishes for his granddad watching in Sacramento this afternoon. And what a thrill for Grandpa Henry Reynolds to watch Rick return that block punt. Here's Donald Ikwe Pique with the kickoff. It's short. Bobbled and picked up by Joe Allen. That's the second kick he's bobbled in as many returns. And he does get it out to the 25-yard line. Let's go back to the punt block by Rick Reynolds. Well, it's a long effort by Reynolds, who is located. I'm trying to circle him. There he is right there. He simply comes in right here. Now, this gentleman up front is a personal protectorate. His job, his responsibility is simply to take anyone that breaks through the seam and protect the, the punter. He goes to the left. Reynolds comes free to the right, makes the block, picks it up, and goes in for the touchdown. That is the first blocked punt return for a touchdown in the history of the Tampa Bay Buccaneer franchise. First and ten, Redskins, Biner starts right, comes back left, rigs up the middle. And he bolts across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Eugene Marv, number 99, makes the tackle. Broderick Thomas has come in now, number 51, defensively, the number one draft choice out of Nebraska. We expect to see quite a bit of him today. He's not been able to dislodge Winston Moss as a starter at the right outside yeah, linebacker. Ray, Ray Perkins said that, that Broderick Thomas is at, the is, is at this stage of his career the same as Winston Moss was in his, and Winston Moss now is an outstanding linebacker. Second and one, Rippin. That's a first down, Redskins at the 43. Ricky Reynolds with the tackle. The real key to throwing a short pass like that, Vern, is the tackles. The tackles are, are responsible for setting and then chopping the inner of the linebackers and forcing them to keep their hands down, and that creates the lane for the quarterback to throw it out in the flat. If Jacoby doesn't keep the guy's hands down, then that ball is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And if it comes this side, it's Jim Lachey who's working against Robert Pig Goff. Now five-man front for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First and ten. Watch the reverse. Gary Clark with Rippin leading the way. And a pretty good block by Mark Rippin. Odie Harris made the tackle on Gary Clark, but he's down to the 43-yard line of Tampa. You always run a reverse on the linebackers or the ends that love to chase. Obviously, the Redskins think that Goff Number 94 will chase, so there's the reverse to Clark. Goff is hooked on the inside, not really chasing. Good job by Rippin. Rippin makes an effort. Hey, give, give him an A for effort. There's the shot right there on Harris, 20 the free safety. First down and 10, 7-0 Tampa leads, under three minutes to go, first quarter. Art Monk, the motion man, draw play, Riggs, oh, stopped. Mark Robinson up on top. Eugene Marv, number 99, down low. That's the first time that we've seen the famous counter tray or counter gap or counter trap or so many various names for the, the play where the Redskins pull both the offside guard and offside tackle and, and pull them to the right or to the left. That time, the defense of the Tampa Bay pinched inside and knocked these guys off. No way to run it. Second down and eight. Play fake. Gary Clark is open. 
overthrown. And you thought that play action might work well against the safeties for Tampa Bay. Harry Hamilton not in there. But well, the real key was that Rippon did play action, which frees his linebackers and hopefully will hold up a safety. Normally it's the free safety who will read through the secondary and look, I mean, through the backfield and look at a quarterback. But the key was Monk ran a deep crossing pattern that pulled the weak safety out. And then the play action and the post that time, Clark was wide open. Rippon missed him. Third and eight. Don Warren sets up tight to the left. Biner the only running back now. And Ricky Sanders starts in motion. Not a lot of pressure. Bobbled and caught short of the first down at the 39-yard line. Biner. So Moshenko comes out. That's a little out of Low Miller's range. Donnie Futrell makes the tackle. Bobby Futrell. 94. This is Robert Pig Goff. He will come inside. This is a man that, that, that I guarantee you, Jacoby has got a lot of respect for because he has put a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks. Two sacks last week, but Goff just took an outside rush there. Not much to that. Here's Mozienko's kick. This time, not as much pressure. And he gets a heck of a Washington bounce and rolls to a stop and is down to five-yard line. Reggie Branch got down there. A 34-yard punt and nothing on the return. The only touchdown thus far, a 33-yard return with a block punt by Ricky Reynolds of Tampa Bay. You know, Testaverde has that bad knee, and he's not moving well on that knee at all. And the passes he has thrown, he's actually thrown off balance. Just nothing but his arm. And you push with your right leg as a quarterback. That's where you generate the steam. But then the left leg has to re has to hold up the force. And Testaverde's left leg is the one that's hurt. And I don't think he can push off with his right and support himself with his left. So he's throwing the ball with his arm. First and ten from the five. They'll go from the end zone. Deep left side. And Mark Carrier had to adjust his route. He was cutting back to his right. And the pass over his outside shoulder. Mark Carrier and Bruce Hill. Nice Watch route that. by Carrier down. Makes a little move inside. Hopefully he'll freeze the corner, but a beautiful job that time by 34 Davis. Davis turned him loose to the inside, stayed with him back to the outside. Really not much of a chance to complete that. Mark Carrier, they pick on Brian Davis because Daryl Green is an all-pro, and Davis has not been having a good season. He gave up the winning touchdown last week to Augusta Turner of the Giants. High formation on second and ten. Cross left, Warriors take. And he picks up four to the nine-yard line. When the Tampa Bay team beat Chicago, Vern, Tate rushed for over 100 yards. Coming into the play, the Redskins today, the Tampa Bay team feels as though this Washington Redskin team is equivalent to the Bears team. So if you put it all in perspective, you would think that Tate, once again, would have to be able to rush the football maybe 100 yards. Yeah, I know Ray Perkins would love to have that. Play selection thus far for Tampa Bay, nine passes and three runs. The Redskins, as Terry thought they might, have concentrated on the ground game, eight and six. Third and six here, seven nothing Tampa leads, final 30 seconds of the first quarter. Bobbled and dropped, Ron Hall, the tight end. And that would have been enough for a first down, and Testaverde is down at the goal line. Hall coming across, got inside of Walton, the strong safety, and all Vinny had to do was just have the ball out about another foot, and the tight end Hall grabs that thing. It was man coverage, and everyone was run off, and now it's a foot race between Hall and the guy that was covering him, Walton. Chris Moore, the Joe Howard, he's another of those who has black shoes with white tape wrapped all over them. NFL's going to make a lot of money today. <laughs> Howard, 42. Inside the 30. And he almost broke it for much more. 14-yard return of a short punt. Only 33 yards. And with 16 seconds to go first quarter, the Redskins come back on the field. At the conclusion of today's game, 
Terry and I will select a player of the game from each team who will be candidates for the National Miller Lite Player of the Week honors. Mark Rippon. In his third year from Washington State, he was a teammate at Washington State of Ricky Reynolds, the man who blocked the punt and returned it for the touchdown. And now Reynolds looks in at his former teammate who's in the quarterback on first and ten. Quick step right side, Gary Clark hit by Rod Jones at the 25-yard line. The only reason, if you're asking why are the Redskins running five-yard hooks when they're so dangerous with their crossing routes, it's simple. The corners have so much respect for the Redskin receivers. They're playing 10 yards off, and Rippon just simply says, hook five, I'll throw it to you. That's the end of one. Three to go here at RFK. Tampa Bay leads Washington by seven. He is sponsored by Miller Lite. Official sponsor of the NFL Player of the Year Award. Miller Lite brings you the NFL's best. New York Lite, the company you keep. And by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Gorgeous day here in Washington. Tampa Bay leading 7-0. They are on defense now as the Redskins have a chance to tie it. There's Rondy Weston, number 77. He and Sean Lee, 97, have come in defensively. Weston, a third-round draft choice of the Dallas Cowboys, cut by Jimmy Johnson before the season began. He gave up on him and says now, I think maybe we cut him a little earlier. He caught on with Tampa Bay and is playing now. 7-0. Mark Griffin and the Redskins have a second down and five from the 24. Griffin looks right, fires right. Caught, nice catch. By the tight end, Jimmy Johnson, number 88, a rookie. His second catch of the year. He's out of Howard University here in Washington, D.C. If I gave a trivia question, name the four, name one team that has four tight ends on its active roster, you would have to say the Washington Redskins. Jimmy Johnson is one of them. Nice job, little catch, nice, got, got down, got his hands on it, made the grab and got the first down. Jimmy Johnson from Howard, who's coach Steve Wilson, just retired as a... Denver Bronco defensive back. Here's Gerald Riggs. Caught behind the line and dropped for a loss at the 19-yard line. Sean Lee, number 97. Winston Moss, number 58. Yeah, the stops are stopping him. That Winston Moss, man, he played off the entire pulling left side of the Redskins. Got out there, got his hands up, did a whale of a job of, of getting in back in the backfield. Really, the key to a 3-4, Vern, is the outside linebackers and their ability to come up and rush and their ability to get out and make pass coverage. Moss that time coming up and supporting the run is a, is a real plus. The Buccaneers go with their dime defensive package now. Six defensive backs, Sherman Kokrov and Bobby Futrell have come in defensively. Draw play. Biner, he's knocked backwards at the 15-yard line. It'll be third down. Eugene Marr made the tackle, number 99. Stan Humphreys, the backup quarterback, signals to play in as the Redskins now inside the 20. They've not been that effective once they've gotten in what they call the red zone. They've scored a touchdown 39% of the time. That's 24th in the National Football League. And they have a third and nine here, trailing by seven. And this is the number one offense in the National Football League. That's right. They average 409 yards a game. Rippon, deep in the middle. Just knocked away as Gary Clark was open for about that long. And again, it's Ricky Reynolds. Rippin threw that football off the wrong foot, Vern. He threw it with all arm. He wasn't able to stand up and stride. Notice his left foot's out to the left. The right foot is out to the right. Throws across his body. And look at that thing. Wobble. Whack, whack. That allowed Ricky Reynolds a floater. Ricky Reynolds came along with his shotgun and knocked it down. Chip Lomiller is on. He's 12 of 14 this year, having a terrific year. This will be 33 yards out. And it's perfect. So Lomiller gets the Redskins on the board, but again, Washington has to settle for three when they wanted seven. It's 7-3 Tampa Bay, early second quarter. Thus far, Ricky Reynolds blocked punt, returned 33 yards for a touchdown. Washington has run for 37, and Testaverde is 4 for 10 for 72 yards. 
but uh, neither he nor Mark Rippon has thrown for a touchdown so far in the game. And you had an interesting comment, Terry Bradshaw, that young quarterbacks have problems throwing touchdown passes. Well, they do, the, especially in tight, Vern. Number one, you don't drop seven steps, so you obviously you're in a short pocket, which makes you a little bit uncomfortable. You're, you're not real sure whether you're going to have enough time. Number two, you don't have much end zone, so everything is quicker. Everything is much quicker, so you have to make quick decisions and get rid of the football quickly. And young quarterbacks have a hard time learning where to go with the football down there. One of them is ripping. Bonnie Elder returns this kick for the Buccaneers out to the 22-yard line. And Vinny Testaverde, who uh, obviously has been hampered by that bad knee, comes on. Vinny, who suffered so much a year ago, but has thrown many fewer interceptions. He's wrapped the knee now, but he's not wearing a brace which you found kind of interesting. Well, I did, and, and he, he told us the reason I'm not going to wear a brace is because I hate the restriction. So he'll sacrifice the knee to have the freedom, the movement of the, of the joint. He says, I will take my ankles, but only on game day. But I will not put a brace on my knee. He wore a brace as a junior at Miami and discarded it as a senior and hasn't worn one since. From the 23, first and 10, Tampa Bay lead by four. James Wilder Tracy Rocker Tracy Rocker the Island Trophy winner out of Auburn a third round draft choice whether or not he would fit in left of your screen notice that he comes inside or the right rather comes inside no one blocks him actually the guards get there too late and then Wilder Wilder gets the handoff and then Rocker rocks him in the backfield that's a loss of seven. Tracy Rocker getting his first start today in place of Marcus Cook. Flag is down. William Howard makes the catch, and he's out to the 28-yard line, but I rather expect this will come back and go against Tampa Bay. Wilbur Marshall makes the stop, number 58. You know, yep. short drops by a quarterback help an offensive line, Vernon, that the quarterback automatically should get rid of the football quicker. Therefore, you should have fewer holding plays by an offensive lineman. Maybe tripping instead of holding. Let's see. We have tripping number 72 offense. Second down. That's Rob Taylor. The right tackle. There's Dexter Manley, the uh, defensive end. Rob Taylor, the four-year man out of Northwestern. I, I like that. If I'm a quarterback, I used to tell, hey, look, you trip, you hold, you bite, you talk about everybody in their family, but don't you let them touch me. That's okay. I don't mind the penalty. We'll make it up right here. Let's see if Testaverde did. Draw play. hit by Kurt Cabrera. Del Grant told us coming into this game that this football team is ready to play. It's as serious as I've ever seen them. In practice, no one was cutting up. Everyone was serious. They are taking the Tampa Bay team very serious. Terry, they had a team meeting Wednesday night. No coaches. Are those meetings effective? Do they do any good? They're good if you're a veteran football team that's expected to win. They're good. If you're a young team, you can meet till the cows come home. It doesn't do any good until you get talent. Third and 25. Timeout. Tampa Bay. Their first charge team timeout. The words of Tom Dooley. 10-28 to go first half. And Testaverde trots to the sideline. It's a 7-3 Tampa Bay lead. 10-28 to go first half. Tampa leads it by four points. But they face a third and 25. Testaverde had to use a timeout. Well, if I'm a quarterback, I'm thinking it's almost impossible to get third and 25, but let me get 15. Let me really work this pass for my punting team to get them some room to work. Nickel defense in for the Redskins. 
safety. but Manley comes around and makes the sack on Testaverde. Once again, Vern, the position of the quarterback in the field is one in which you say to yourself, against a great team that has the ability to rush the passer is, I'm going to have to give up my 25, hopefully get the 10-yard pass off, let the receiver run the extra 15, or just get it off, get, catch the 15, get tackled. But anything I can do to help my punt team, that time the safety doesn't help the punt team, does bring the punter out, though. Out for the free kick as the Redskins now have five points. A low Miller field goal. Manley with the safety. Wilbur Marshall got there first and flew over the top of any Testaverde. I know if I'm a quarterback, even as a veteran quarterback, having played in a lot of big games, the one time my pulse rate would quicken, the one time I would say to myself, hey, I don't like this. <laughs> one time I was really nervous, to be honest with you, is when I had to set up in the end zone and stand there and try to throw a ball down the field. I didn't like it any more than this young guy, Testaverde, likes it. Now the free kick, Chris Moore. Joe Howard, that's a very poor punt, very poor. It's taken by the Redskins at the 40 and returned to the 43-yard line. Reggie Branch, number 29, is tackled by Sherman Cocroft. There's the captain of the special teams for the Washington Redskins. So a 7-5 game. And Mark Griffin leads the Redskins up, trailing by two now with 10-16 to go, first half. Griffin stumbles a little bit, has a man open, Ricky Sanders in the middle. First down at the 40. A gain of 16, first down, Washington. This, you've seen hook, you've seen the little hook, Vern, the little five-yard hitch by the receivers, little three-step drop by Ripon. Watch this now as the pass. Notice the one, two, and the three. Now watch him do a little move there. That's a hook and go, but it was covered. Excellent job. But then a fine job by Ripon of saying, oh, it's covered. I'm coming back to Sanders over the middle. Riggs and Viner in the backfield. This is Gerald Riggs. Does a little polka in the backfield and picks up an extra four yards inside the 40 near the 37-yard line. Mark Rippon, who belied his calm state yesterday, indicated he was nervous. He walked in to meet with us and had the top chewed off of his pen. And he said, that's nothing. I used to chew the top off those little army guys when I was a boy. Second down and eight. Off his back foot, deep into double coverage, incomplete. Intended for Sanders. No flags. Well, we said at the top of the show that the post route might be the place for the Redskins to attack. Sanders down the middle appears to be open. Now, now in comes another safety. And the key to this, the folks are hollering for a penalty, but the real key was the fact that Mark Robinson, 30, the man that ran up Ricky Sanders' legs, turned around to find the football. That's incidental contact, and there will never be a flag on that. Third and eight. Redskins trail 7 to 5, 8.54 to go first half. Ripping for Clark. First down at the 28 yard line. 
Mark Robinson makes the tackle. Boy, the Hogs are doing a great job of giving Rippon time to, to look over the field. That time, Clark was initially his man at first. Rippon came off, went to the outside, and then the third time came back to Clark. And you can't go to a third receiver unless your offensive line is giving you ample time. And the offensive line of Washington is doing a whale of a job today of protecting their quarterback. Clark has caught three in this ball game. First down and 10, Washington 7 to 5 is a score. Now, Biner, a late addition to the offensive lineup, lines up a pullback. Gerald Rooms for the 25 yard line. And Gene Marv and Riggs are going to have a couple of words with each other. Broderick Thomas gets into it. Kurt Jarvis tries to be peacemaker. And Rippon reaches over and taps Gene Marv on the uh, shoulder pad. Yeah, why waste your energy? You know, you're going to get in a fight, you get all that gear on. I never had figured that out. Just, you know, a couple of words and turn around and get on back to where you're supposed to be. If I recall, you had one fight in your career, right? Buck Buchanan, if you're going to get in a fight, pick on the biggest guy. He's the biggest guy I've ever seen in my life. And that's why you only had one fight. One fight. I beat his leg with that. Second and seven. Rippon in trouble, and he fumbles again. That is the sixth time this year that Mark Rippon has been sacked, and the sixth time he has fumbled. And the first time, the first play last week, the first pass attempt by Rippon was knocked down last week. He had one knocked down against the Cowboys in the first quarter that was picked up and returned for a touchdown. A semi-roll to the right. That's a rolling pocket. Looks to his right. No one there. Urban forces Rippon to pick the ball up, pull it back down, and then the hit from the backside. Looks like Broderick Thomas, number 51, strips the ball. Six times he's been sacked. Six times he has fumbled. And is aware of the problem. And now we may have a replay. Yep. Well, they're going to look and see whether or not his hand was going forward and if that's the case that it'll be ruled an incomplete pass and it will remain back with the Redskins if indeed the, the hand of the quarterback is not going forward then it'll be ruled a fumble and, it'll, and Tampa Bay will be able to keep the ball let's see you be the judge does the hand go forward there's the pump now Ribbon pulls the ball up and nope before he can even get the elbow above his waist Broderick Thomas 51 comes in and strips him of the football that should be Tampa Bay ball after further review the play will stand as called First down. you know he, he admitted to us he said I don't know what to do I can't see people coming from, from behind me I you, you can't practice holding on to a football when you're trying to pass it and people are hitting you from the back it's just an amazing stat though six times sack six fumbles and we get the crowd back on the Redskins side Charles Mann they contact with James Wilder. Well, the defense of the Redskins, man in particularly, man in Manley, and of course the tackles, if they can stop the running game and force Tampa to have to throw the football with quarterback Tester Verde now with the bad knee, and I don't think he can move out of the pocket, man, this is going to be a long day. They're going to have to really be able to run or throw on first down, not run on first down. Tampa Bay having problems rushing the ball. Minus four thus far in the first half. And the Redskins with 42. And second down, 12. And again, they can't run it. Lars Tate knocked down. Charles Mann and Raven Caldwell. Redskins as a team giving up only 101 yards per game on an average. So they have been good against the run. Yeah, but they're giving up 251 a game passing. passing. So then you say, are they good versus the run? No. People want to throw the football on them, which makes them automatically good against the run. Third and 13. Don Smith in for Tampa Bay. The only way that you 
can intercept a crossing route if you're a defensive back. And my thinking is if the ball is underthrown. This is excellent coverage by Barry Smith, 45. There's the pass. That's just excellent coverage. That ball was perfectly thrown. It's just excellent coverage and an excellent move by 45 Smith. Barry Wilburn, I'm sorry, Barry Wilburn, 45. That's a good thrown ball, but Vinny Testaverde should have never thrown it. That is the second interception this year for Barry Wilburn, only the sixth time that Testaverde has been picked off. First and 10 Redskins trailing 7 to 5 with 5.38 to go, first half. Play action. Whipping, wide open, Biner can't connect. And should have. Biner coming over in a trade from Cleveland. One of the things that he, one of the reasons for him was the fact that he is such an excellent receiver out of the backfield and something the Redskins like to do is throw to their backs out of the backfield they like to feature the single back that's Riggs but when they want to throw the football they will bring in Biner if they indeed intend to throw a back second and ten five thirty three to go first half Rippin puts it on a rope complete at the thirty and that'll be enough for a first down as they give him the 29, Art Monk, in front of Ricky Reynolds. And Terry has talked about that offensive line work. Watch what they do with Pig Goff, number 94. Goff, 94, is one of the guys you have to be concerned about if you're a Redskin lineman and keeping him out, allowing Rippin time to throw. And there's a good job. Boy, what an excellent job by Russ Grimm, the left guard, of getting his hands in his face and forcing him to the outside and keeping him away from Rippon. Sanders in motion on first and ten. Three-step drop. Art Monk again in front of Ricky Reynolds. And that's the ball still in play at the 24. Yeah, you know, I, I'll say it and say it all day long if I have to, but as long as Jacoby can handle the linemen and they don't get their hands up, and as long as the corners continue to play so far off of these receivers, Notice how easy it is for Rippon just to take the ball and throw it to the outside. Eventually, the corner will gamble, and once the corner, like Ricky Reynolds, gambles and misses a tackle, this will be a touchdown. I'd do that all day. Well, again, Terry, they're way off the line now. Second down and four. Rippon hands it to Gerald Riggs, and he is down to the 19-yard line before Eugene Marr, number 99, makes the tackle. Riggs with 32 yards on 11 carries, four minutes to go, first half, seven to five. Unusual game. We've had a blocked field goal. Tampa Bay, Igwe Buike tried one. He was blocked by Terry Orr. The only touchdown came on a blocked punt returned by Tampa's Ricky Reynolds. And Lowe Miller with a field goal made it seven to three. Dexter Manley tackled Testaverde in the end zone to make it seven five. And now the Redskins threaten to go on top. First down at the 19-yard line. Ricky Sanders cuts in the middle. Picked off. Is it down? Yes, the ball. Oh, no! It is Tampa Bay ball. Mark Robinson has it. That is a catch and a fumble. Now, did he fumble it or Robinson take it away? The question you got to ask yourself, is it a catch? So first of all, we'll establish whether or not it is a catch. Sanders coming over. There's the catch. There's the ball. It looks like Robinson. Came right out of Ricky yeah. Sanders. It looks like the ball. Robinson. Exactly. It looks like the ball rolled out of Sanders and right into the arms of Robinson, who was helping it along by pulling it out. Now travel to Soldier Field to meet Mike and his Bears next Sunday. A lot of you are wondering whether or not this is a good a good catch and a good 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 job. I want you to notice this is the umpire and he has a clear vision to see whether or not that Robinson took the ball away from the receiver. Now Robinson now, now, right here, there's the football. Robinson indeed did take the ball away from Sanders. Turnovers even at one apiece. Lars Tate out of the backfield. Scoots up to the 19-yard line. And a flag is down. They did look at that play by 
the replay official who is Bill Parkinson and ruled that the play would stand. This penalty against Tampa Bay. Seven to five with 318 to go. Buccaneers without a touchdown offensively last week. They had three Igwe Buike field goals and a return of a pass interception. Illegal use of hands, number 84 offense, first down. That's Bruce Hill, one of the two wide receivers. So that uh, puts the ball back inside the 10. 3.15 to go. Yeah, if you want to slow down the pass rush up the Redskins, and they are playing zones right now, one of the things that Testaverde could do is come out, run, and throw those screens and, and try to draw in everyone and then beat the ball open. Dallas Tate tries to get outside. He's being pursued. Raven Caldwell up on top. And Alvin Wolfen also a part of it, number 40. There's Caldwell, who was the first man there. One of the real keys is the strong safety Alvin Walton, anytime a safety is up that quickly to make a stop to the outside, if I'm a quarterback, then one of the things I want to do is be aware of that, and then I want to come out and I want to play action and run right at the strong safety, get him to commit, and then go in behind him. Brings up a second down at 13. Unusual, Tampa Bay has never played here. First time ever. And it can be a rude awakening. Testaverde incomplete. Overthrew William Harris is tight end. Vinny's upset at something. Well, you're seeing the new Vinny Testaverde. It's, it's one of the things Randy Grimes told us that Testaverde would do as you look at Simmons, the left guard, who's down, Vern, but Testaverde will now scream and holler at his lineman, at his lineman, at his receivers if they make mistakes. And Grimes looked at us and says, you know, we like that. We like seeing him do that now. Vinny had a tough year a year ago, 35 interceptions. The whole business about color blindness, even though it didn't affect his ability to play, and it was much magnified in the Tampa Bay area particularly. But you talked to him yesterday and asked him about the mental toughness that might have accrued as a result of all that he's gone through. Well, he, the interceptions, the being the number one, the guy with all the money, uh, the personal uh, problems that he's had that have made the front pages in the Tampa area, uh, the booing, just the negative publicity totally uh, is tough on a young kid. And the point is, and when we, when we ask him the question, now, are you tougher? Yes, he says, mentally, emotionally, I am much tougher. And I don't believe you can play and play at a level in this league, in the National Football League, unless you are extremely mental tough. In other words, saying you're able to wipe them off. And I think Testaverde, I, I know this for a fact, a very sensitive young man, a very caring person, and sometimes that doesn't apply very well on a football field. You need to be a nasty kind of guy. And I think he is now developing that nasty type of attitude to come out here and take charge. Mike Simmons is the injured player, the left guard, young man out of Indiana State, so they will tend to him. Looks like a leg injury, his right leg. This is Simmons. Let me put a big old X on him right there. That's Simmons. I believe that's him. There. That's him. Now let's see if he goes down as Testaverde gets leg whip. It's his right leg, and I can't really tell what happened. But it looked, it appeared on that replay that his leg just gave away. Daryl Grant was uh, the defensive man. So they will continue to tend on Mike Simmons. Next Saturday on CBS Sports, college football action is the 10th ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama face the 17th ranked Penn State Nittany Lions. The Tide put their perfect 6 0 record on the line against Blair Thomas and the Nittany Lions, who are riding their own five game win streak. That CFA action. Next Saturday, live at 2.30 Eastern, right here on CBS Sports. And so here comes the stretcher out for Mike Simmons, and John Bruin is already in the locker room getting his knee x-rayed, so real problems in the offensive line for this very young Tampa Bay Buccaneer team. Well, you have three. They, they still have three players left. They have Harry Sidney, Carl Bax, and Tom McHale. Those are the three young men that could come in and fill in at these guard or tackle spots. 
with Bruin out, that causes a problem automatically. We talked earlier that with, with the lineman as they, that, the, that Tampa Bay has, Vernon, the seven-step drop, deeper routes, takes a little bit of the, puts a little more pressure on them. And now with two, both guards out, you would have to think that if Testaverde is going to throw the ball, he'll have to do it from the shotgun or with play action or with a rolling pocket to get more time to throw. Mike Simmons, the injured guard, the left guard for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and John Bruin, as we said, already in the uh, locker room getting his knee x-rayed. Problems now for this Tampa Bay team. Sell out crowd again on hand at the nation's capital, RFK Stadium, where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers lead the Washington Redskins 7-5. to five. The touchdown came on a 33-yard return of a blocked punt by Ricky Reynolds. Then Chip Lowmiller kicked a field goal to make it 7-3. And Dexter Manley tackled Vinny Testaverde in the end zone for a safety to make it 7-5 with 2.08 to go in the first half. And there they are. They yeah. invited you to come down there and sit with them today. Well, I had a date with uh, the one on the right there last night. <laughs> <laughs> I picked the prettiest one. Oh, little. boy. <laughs> Our nation's government at play. <laughs> That little cheer they they gave us before the game, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, right. <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is, those guys have, who have been uh, they have become institutions here. They sit right on the front row, and they can't see anything. I mean, they've got the worst seats in the stadium, but they are here every week. Back to play now, third and thirteen. Testaverde deep into double coverage, knocked away by Daryl Green. And it'll be fourth down. You can always, if you want to be complimented by the Washington Redskins, you always want to know if you're a wide receiver who's covering you. If Green is covering you, it's because they feel like you're the best receiver on your team. Low Miller, high but very short. Joe Howard with a fair catch. Walton runs into him, but the Redskins get a very lucky bounce. And it goes right into the hands of Gary Clark, Washington ball. waving for the fair catch comes up now his own man Walton the strong safety comes over and actually hits Howard and knocks him aside and Brian Davis 34 is jolly on the spot to pick up the fumble 34 instead of 84 Redskin ball teams coach of the Redskins and he cannot be a very happy man right now because special teams have almost cost the Redskins dearly. As a matter of fact, the only touchdown by Tampa Bay, a block punt. But Wayne Severe looks on now as the Redskin offense has yet one more chance to give Washington the lead. They've got the ball at the 40. Last time they had it, there was a fumble inside the 20. Mark ripping back. Not much pressure. Screen pass to Biner. John Cannon makes the tackle, and the flag is down. Cannon, veteran defensive lineman who is gone into a backup role now that'll be against the Redskins a lot easier to throw zone throw zones or throw these screen zone zones that are with a four down lineman as opposed to four linebackers Vern because although one Coming linebacker might... hands, number 68 offense first down Russ Grimm even though you have finish that up even though you have a linebacker that's running you have another linebacker that has the ability they really explode to the ball well and it's much different much more difficult to throw a screen on four linebackers as it is to three relatively penalty free game thus far 144 to go before halftime seven to five Tampa leads four wide receivers set now for Washington Rippin for Sanders Incomplete. Bobby Futrell and Sherman Cocroft were there. Cocroft just signed. There's Futrell. Sanders on the right of your screen coming down inside. Clark is top left. Notice the combination. There's the move to the inside to free up the line, uh, the uh, safety of the cornerback that time, Ricky Reynolds, and then the route. 
Rippin now 10 of 17, but only for 83 yards. Second and 20, 139 to go. First half. Again, Rippin with a lot of time. Settles for Art Monk, who works the sidelines inside the 35 to the 33 yard line. Mark Robinson defending. I think the thing about Monk, on every team you have speed burners, guys that can go deep. Well, Clark and Sanders are the two guys that really go deep. But the guy that works a defense better than anyone is Monk. Notice Monk has few trail 36, leaves him. Notice Monk just sits there, holds his time, says, five, I'll just wait here. Ripping to be around in a second. He'll give me the ball. Sure enough, he does. Four catches now for Art Monk. Third and four. Sanders, the motion man. Rippin. He does not get sacked. He does get yardage, but that'll be a fourth down and three. And Robert Pick Goff made the tackle. Now let's see if we get Low Miller or if they go for it. I'm sure that for Joe Gibbs, memories of a week ago must be dancing through his head when the New York Giants went for it four, three times on fourth down. And Bill Parcells' team was successful each of the three times in winning that ball game. And the Redskins will go for it. On fourth and three. They have not picked up a fourth down conversion this year. They will now. The fact that Tampa Bay jumps into man coverage when the when motion came across there was a man with him covering him man for man in man coverage no one is responsible to cover the quarterback so therefore Rippon noticing everyone was covered takes off running because no one is there to protect no one is there to cover him personally gets outside gets up inside then outside and gets the first down gain of 15 yards on fourth and three from Mark Rippon first successful fourth down conversion this year next sunday on cbs it's nfl double header action it all starts with the nfl today live at 12 30 eastern and most of you will see the rams battle the chicago bears also dallas takes on phoenix and tampa bay will be at cincinnati in game two of our double header terry and i will be in denver as john elway and the broncos host randall cunningham's philadelphia eagles as some of you will see the redskins at the la raiders or San Francisco goes up against the New York Jets. That's NFL doubleheader action next Sunday, beginning with the NFL Today live at 12.30 Eastern, right here on CBS. 33 seconds to go, first half, first and 10 at the 19. Make it the 18. Sanders across the middle. That's going to be a first and goal, I believe, at the seven-yard line. Tackle made by Mark Robinson. And timeout called by the Redskins with 24 seconds to go. Vikings with Herschel Walker playing now to lead uh, Detroit. Miami over Green Bay at the half by four. Buffalo leads the Jets 13 to nothing in the second quarter. Cincinnati leading Indianapolis at the halftime mark. Houston piling it on Pittsburgh, 17-0. And the Raiders in Philadelphia scoreless in the second quarter. Kansas City over Dallas, 21-14. Paul Palmer, by the way, scored one of the Dallas touchdowns, just acquired on waivers. Mark Rippon now has 16 yards rushing. The Buccaneers have none. It's first and goal at the seventh. Seven to five, Redskins trying to get the first lead of the game. Their first lead. Joe Boston comes over the ball. Finally the back. Don Warren sets up tight to the right. Griffin looks left all the way and it's tipped away and almost picked off. Mark Robinson. 
And he would have had a joyous time flying down the right sideline in front of the Tampa Bay bench had he been able to pick it off. One of the things, top right of your screen, Biner coming out. If Biner's in the only back in the backfield and you're in scoring territory, you have to know that he is the one back that will run the pass route. That time, Tampa Bay put a man on his inside and Robinson on his outside, and Robinson doggone near had the interception. Eight possessions this year, including this one on first and goal. Thus far, only two TDs for the Washington Redskins. That's not a very good average. Rippon drills it. Touchdown, Gary Clark. season for Gary Clark and today his fourth catch for 26 yards as Mark Rippon has spread it around Art Monk number 81 has four Ricky Sanders has caught three and Gary Clark there's Mark Rippon who now is 13 of 21 for 118 yards Seconds to go. Donnie Elder and Bobby Futrell back. Strip kick. Taken by Wilder. And he's out across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Coming up at halftime, Brandon Irv with all the scores, highlights, and latest information. And Irv pieces together the ultimate quarterback, Robo QB. That's coming up at halftime, which is just six seconds away from now. Robo, Robo QB. I would be interested in seeing what a the ultimate ultimate quarterback. quarterback. You think you might be a part of that whole picture? Who? Herb Cross's highlight thing. Uh, Robo QB. Could be. I wonder if it's got dollar signs hanging all out of every pocket. <laughs> that would be part of it, wouldn't it? I think so. <laughs> First and ten. Flag is down. William Howard makes the catch. Oh, he doesn't make the catch. It's incomplete. And time has expired. It expires on the offensive play, so the Redskins will decline it, and it will be, I think. Let's see. Here's Tom Dillon. We have holding number 72 offense. The penalty is declined, and it's over the first half. So it took a long time at RFK Stadium with the Redskins leading 12-7. Gary Clark with a touchdown as uh, Mark Rippon found him to give the Redskins a 12-7 lead. Well, here is a switch. <laughs> I get to play quarterback, finally, because Terry's going to turn into a running back. We thought it might be interesting for you to see the different ways running backs receive a handoff. Terry, let's talk about Gerald Riggs and how he might receive a handoff from Mark Rippon. If you're going to the right, if a running back is going to the right, he will drop the right hand down. The ball will slide in. Now he is able to take the ball. Now it is protected by his body away from the opposing rush. And now he can use the left hand to push off and protect and to move. Now, okay. what if you're going this way? Now it's just the opposite. Now the left arm goes down. The right arm forms the pocket. The ball is in here. He pulls it away to the left. 
and now the right hand is protectorate, and the body is between the ball and the defensive line. Now, what if they wind up in the eye formation? Now, if you're in your eye, the tailback doesn't know if he's going right or left, so he stands like this, and when he comes up, quarterback hands him the ball like this. And then by the eyes, the back looks, sees the hole. If he's to the right, then it's like this. And if it's to the left, then he's able to do this and move right or left out of the eye. Well, we'll watch Gerald Riggs in the second half and see how he receives the ball. And next week, Terry's going to let me throw it. That's right. <laughs> well, you have about enough room for your arms capacity right up there. That's here. right. 12-7 <laughs> at yeah. halftime. Gerald Riggs with 32 yards in the first half of play. Looking for his first 100-yard game in a while, and I expect that with the lead, they might run him a little bit in the second half. Tampa Bay will kick off. Here's Donald Igwe Buque. Take him at the two. A.J. Johnson out to the 26-yard line. Tackle made by Jamie Walker. Time stats 38 plays for the Redskins they've averaged 4.6 and they have had much the better field position in the ball game and the Tampa Bay offense has been stymied by the Redskin defense now let's see what Washington has in mind on offense the number one offense in the league coming in today with a 409 yard per game average Mark Griffin 13 of 21 in the first half going to his left out to the 41 and if you watch Terry at halftime you'll notice how Riggs took that handoff going left the tackles Vern this is interesting if you look at, at Riggs and how he's run the line look at it first in the first six games, 17% of defensive line, 7% today are making the tackles. Linebackers, 42% the first game, only 25% the telltale sign is today. The defensive back below the box having to make all the tackles. Well, you never want to see that if you're a defensive coach. First down and 10. Riggs again. Out to the 47-yard line. Tackle made by Ruben Davis, number 79. So Gerald Riggs with two fine carries to open the third quarter. In the eye, this is the form of the eye. Notice, there's the hand now to the left. Notice left hand and down, right elbow up, puts the ball in. There's the shield, and now he has the right arm free to be a, a blocker for him, be a protector for him. Limping a little bit as he comes off, and Jamie Morris takes his place. Limping, Gary Clark. What a victory move. the 43 yard line Ricky Reynolds knocked him out if you can run the football and run it successfully now you can control the game and then if you want to throw the football and throw the football short then you take two people run them deep and then you bring a receiver underneath shallow there's no way you can cover all three two receivers went deep for the Redskins Sanders and Mump Clark came underneath he's wide open that's a gain of 13 first down and 10 at the 41 12-7, Washington. Jamie Morris. Inside the 40 at the 38-yard line. Morris, who comes in with 126 yards for the season. Tackle made by the nose tackle, Kurt Jarvis. When you're running the football too, Vern, you can always tell where you think you can be successful, and the Redskins believe they can be by running over Lachey, the left tackle, and at Robert Pig Goff, 94. Good job that time by, by Lachey as he got in underneath Goff's shoulder pads, held him, and then drove him to the ground. Pig Goff, who said of Lachey, I want to run him all afternoon. It's gone the other way for him most of the day. That ball is tipped and caught. Art Monk. Reynolds went for the pick, the interception. We and said, Art Monk with the catch. 
You're right. The gamble, remember we said earlier, the gamble on the little plays, you gamble, you stay back, and then you finally say, I can't stand this anymore. I have to gamble. But when you gamble and it doesn't pay off, this is the result. There's a throw, not a pretty pass, end over end once again. There's the gamble by Ricky Reynolds. He misjudged it, and Monk is there to make the grab in the first down. Art Monk with five catches for 64 yards, first down at the 17. 12-7 Redskins lead, and they are threatening. That's binary in motion, and Riggs to the 14-yard line. Tackle made by Sean Lee, number 97. Gerald Riggs back in the lineup after a brief rest. 55 yards on 14 carries thus far. What we've seen the Redskins do in this area is work all their routes underneath. They've sent guys and they've crossed one man underneath and hit that one person. Now with three wide receivers, four wide receivers now in one back, Biner is the guy you have to be concerned about out of the backfield. Don Warren, the tight end, is way at the top of your screen, split left. Griffin looks to his right, catches Sanders at the 10-yard line. And Odie Harris, number 20, makes the tackle. A couple of Texans, one from Southwest Texas State, and that man, Odie Harris, from Sam Houston State. Good coverage, too. Signed as a free agent a couple of years ago after a midnight workout. He wasn't high on anybody's wanted list, and his hometown is Bryan, College Station area of Texas, where Texas A&M is located. One of the scouts came down to work out the Aggies and worked him out at midnight, and they signed him as a free agent. Third and two. Griffin in the end zone for Quad. Quad touchdown. Flag is down. We'll see if the play stands. It's going to be on Odie Harris, number 20. As he gets tangled up in Clark's feet, Harris falls down, and Clark stays up and is wide open. There are two flags down. against Tampa Bay. Now well, you got a personal foul and a holding. Illegal use of Defensive pass interference in the end zone is declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer, hitting him in the head is declined. Touchdown. The roughing the passer will be enforced on the kickoff. Gary Clark's second touchdown catch today, five for the season. The point is up and good. Watch the tangle in the end zone, Odie Harris and Gary Clark. There's Eugene Marvin, Irvin Randall. Randall coming in late. There's a layup. Beautiful throw by Rip and laid it up nicely. Nice job. Now the, the flag I, is going to be on 54, I believe. Irvin Randall, 50. No, it comes from the outside. I can't see the, ah, there it is. 97, that's Sean Lee. Sean Lee coming in. One thing you can do, you can tackle the quarterback, you can hit the quarterback, but don't hit him in the head. Catch of the day gives Washington a 19-7 lead. They have scored 19 unanswered points. And, of course, the roughing the passer call. There's Odie Harris, who was guilty of the tripping call in the end zone. Yeah, Odie told told us that he, if he could have his dream game today, it would be three interceptions, two fumble recoveries. I believe he also said, what, one one fumble, forced one forced fumble? Got some work to do in the second yeah, half he's, then. He's got quite a bit to do here. Don't forget the penalty on Sean Lee assessed on the kickoff, so Low Miller's kick goes from the 50-yard line and will come out to the 20-yard line after a touchback. Next Saturday on CBS, college football action as the 10th-ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama faced the 17th-ranked Penn State Nittany Lions. The Tide put their perfect 6-0 record on the line against Blair Thomas and the Nittany Lions, who are riding their own five-game win streak. CFA action next Saturday, live at 2.30 Eastern, right here on CBS. Did you watch that game yesterday, the Alabama game? Yes, I did. Alabama. A lot of scoring. A lot of scoring. Hollinsworth, that kid, that quarterback. Hey. 
Not bad, huh? Not bad. Had two good ones yesterday. Notre Dame, of course, winning over Southern Cal. Throwing game. First down for the 20, 19 to 7. Tampa Bay needs to get some offense. Lars Tate. Tracy Rocker, number 99, makes the tackle. And Greg Minuski, number 91, is getting a start at middle linebacker today. There's Minuski, who uh, played his collegiate ball at Colgate. Said when he came into the pros, he shed the Colgate image. Got himself a Fu Manchu and a Mohawk. That's about as far away from the Colgate image as you can get. He started last week because Neil Olkowitz is on injured reserve, and Minuski played pretty well at 13 tackles a week ago. Second down. And 10. Audible by Testaverde. Bruce Hill, Mark Carrier. Incomplete. Testaverde is. He's hobbled a little bit yeah, you there. See, I just don't think that his knee is 100%. Well, I know it's not 100%, but it doesn't look like he can push off. It looks like everything's on his arm, Vern. That's a half back pedal and turns around, and everything is quick, and then a little shot in the back by Tracy Rocker. But, and you can tell that Vinny's in a lot of pain. This, the offense you would expect, we thought coming in, would be more of a deep pass set offense and right now he's doing three and five step drop but he he really isn't having enough time to do three and five step drop even at that the line of the skins is in his face third and ten blitz short of the first down mark carrier makes the catch brian davis makes the tackle and tampa bay will have to punt there's Brian Davis out of Nebraska. And Joe Howard goes back to return the punt. Houston continues to pile it on Pittsburgh. And the Raiders in Philadelphia still scoreless. Wow. 19 to 7 here. Chris Moore. Nice punt. Joe Howard at the 31. Recover. Alvin Walton exchanging words with somebody. And now a little finger pointing goes on. Joe Howard breathes a sigh of relief as the ball was stripped. There is the strip. And it was Walton who got the recovery, so the Redskins have it at the 48. Stephen Caldwell, Richie Pettibone, the defensive coordinator, goes over things with Greg Minuski and Raven Caldwell and other members of the defensive unit as the Redskin offense has a first down and 10 with 8.44 to go, third quarter. Ernest Biner starts in motion number 21. Gerald Riggs lost the 50 down to the 48-yard line. Redskins, of course, losers last week to the Giants and Jack Kent Cook from his booth, the owner of the Redskins, explaining how things are going well so far. See, if we'd have only done this last week, they lead it 19 to 7, Washington 3 and 3, and bringing the Giants by two games. Griffin. for the 47-yard line. Tackle made by Rod Jones, number 22, the former number one draft choice out of SMU. An audible by Rip, and when, the, when they went out and sent their receiver into the slot muck, no one went out to cover him. Rippon saw it, made the audible to the to get the ball to Muck. But then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Winston Moss said, oh, my gosh, I'm in the wrong place. And he runs out, gets out too late to cover Muck, who was wide open. Muck has six catches now in the ballgame. Redskins seem to be in control of this thing. They lead it 19 to 7. Mark Muck now has seven catches. 
And a first down at the 22-yard line after a 24-yard gain. You can never let up against Washington. They will take advantage of every weakness you have. They're extremely well coached. We have seen all day long Clark and Sanders coming underneath, coming underneath. And now what happens? Now they say to heck with that. All we're getting is five yards out of those guys. Let's send our old man Monk. Let's send him on a deep crossing route. And let's isolate him one-on-one. -on -one. Monk gets wide open. Look at that. Seven for 91. Nice day. Biner and Riggs in the backfield now. Biner lines up as a wing to the right. Now starts in motion. Draw play. Riggs to the 18-yard line. Sean Lee, number 97, makes the tackle on Gerald Riggs. The great thing about playing for the Washington Redskins is the fact that they have such a great offensive line and two outstanding tackles and guards and a center that a quarterback has the luxury of running right or left. Most teams, you can only go one way. But with these guys, you can run right or left. You can go up the middle. And then if you decide you want to throw the football or whatnot, there's nothing better than having three guys that have made the Pro Bowl catching passes. There's Mark May, number 73, next to Boston. There's the fake and rip it. Lobs it out left, incomplete, and boy, Winston Moss, if he could have turned around, might have gone for a bundle. I made a comment yesterday to you in watching the Alabama game of what an excellent job that quarterback did, and when the pressure was on him, he seemed to turn his head and go right to the guy that was wide open. And this young quarterback, Rippon, that time was looking all over the field, and the minute the pressure hit him, he turned to the left and threw to Terry Orr on the crossing route, who was open. And that is not easy to do. Rippon doing a fine job. Third down. Sanders in motion. Rippin, and he almost fumbled again this time. He did hold on to it, but he's hurt. Take a look. Monk came wide open. A lot left of your screen. Monk will come open. Rippin looking right now. He turns and holds the ball, and now he falls. And when he falls, he is he falls on top of the football. And therefore, look, that's Mark Robinson, the safety. Blitzing coming from the outside, hits him in the back, knocks the ball loose, and then Rippin falls on top of the football. And if I had to speculate, I would say that the air's been knocked out of him, and that is extremely painful. Mark Robinson caused it. Stan Humphreys has not taken a snap this year. Mark Rippon has taken them all. Humphreys, a first-year man out of Northeast Louisiana. Yeah, he went to Southwest, Southwood High School, the same high school that my young brother, that Craig, went to. There's there, Rippon. Now, now Rippon picks up Monk, picks him up too late, and then the ball is knocked loose, and then he falls on top of the ball, and it looks like the ball lands right in the midsection. And when you do that. It knocks the wind out. Doug Williams, of course, had back surgery this summer and uh, might be back, might be back before the year well, is up. Well, if you talk to Doug, listen to Doug, Doug's wanting to come back. And then if you listen to Gibbs, Gibbs is saying, well, I'm not sure if he's committed to coming back. And da, da, da. So, I, you know, there's a, maybe there's a little something going on there. But now Stan Humphreys is a young man, Vern, that played extremely well in the preseason games. And Gibbs is extremely high on it. And he, once again, he falls into the mold of these Redskin quarterbacks. Big, strong guy. There is obviously more than just the wind knocked out, I would think, because of the length of time it's taking. Stan Humphreys, Northeast Louisiana. Gosh, wouldn't you like to be a young quarterback with the arm this kid has and to be able to come into a situation with great people around you? Man, can you grow up quick? Good to see this. Well, yeah, it might be just the wind because Mark is walking off by himself. It sure is good to see this. It'll be fourth down, so Low Miller comes on. He would have to lay out, Rippon would have to lay out one play, and since this is a field goal, that's the one play, and so if the Redskins get the ball back, Rippon would then be able to go back in and play if he's all right. Low Miller's misses this year have come from 49 and 42. This will be a 42-yarder. 
Perfect. Twenty-two unanswered points for the Washington Redskins. They are in command now as they meet the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and lead them twenty-two to seven. Six twenty remaining third quarter on a beautiful October afternoon at RFK Stadium in Washington. Twenty-two seven now. The Redskins lead it. Crowd of fifty-two thousand eight hundred sixty-two on hand. There are, believe it or not, three thousand no shows today. Back to the 35 yard line on the Redskins sideline Mark Rippon wincing just a little bit 19 of 28 for 192 yards two touchdowns and I think go back to your point Terry that he may have just had the wind knocked out of him because he did get up and walk off by himself yeah, you have, if you've ever had the wind knocked out of you I mean you'll kick ground and roll scream if you can't scream because you don't have anything to scream with but it's extremely painful and it's not something that just high you know you get over it in five or five or ten seconds you know it takes a while and thank goodness he's all right Redskin defense has dominated especially on the ground last week they gave up 133 yards thus far Tampa Bay was zero yards rushing play fake test to Verde. Deep middle intercepted by Todd Bowles. Picked off at the 42, and he's still running free. And in the middle of the celebration, concern for Daryl Green, his defensive teammate, who is back at the 40-yard line and down. Daryl Green, the All-Pro, still back at the 40. Todd Bowles gets his second interception of the season. Well, there's your play action. That doesn't do good to anyone. No, 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 notice no linebackers are holding up. They're still dropping deep. And then there's the pass. That's just poorly thrown ball. Just there's no reason to throw that ball. And Green coming over top of Bowles, who makes the interception, comes underneath. You know, you have to have alternate routes. So if you throw a deep post, you must know what the backside coverage is. That's the weak safety. That's Bowles' area. He comes over. Green comes off the right side. He's running. You see that, then you come off of it. You don't just run and, and try to jam it in there. Saw the collision, Daryl Green and Todd Bowles. Daryl Green is still down. And we'll take this time out. Up to his feet, injured in that collision with Todd Bowles after the interception by Bowles. Uh, Green will be helped to the sideline here at RFK. Daryl Green, seventh year now, the All Pro, fastest man in the National Football League, and in a wild collision with Todd Bowles. Goes back, to, goes back to Houston and works out at the hill. Says he's in the best shape he's ever been. And maybe that helped him a little bit here. As you see Bowles to the right, I mean to the left, coming underneath. Both Bowles and Green went for the interception. Bowles beat him by a half a step, and then his leg looks like it got wrapped up with Green. And therefore, Green's the one that gets hurt on the play. After the 25-yard interception, here's Rippin back to throw deep at the end zone for Art Monk. Double coverage, tipped away, incomplete. Ricky Reynolds, Mark Robinson. The easiest pass to throw in the National Football League and to get touchdowns on and to get interceptions is the post. Number one, it, it's long. You can see everyone in the secondary. So if it isn't, if it's covered, you come off of it. Play action does no good there. The post route was covered. But when you come off of a deep route, you always have a medium route following it. Clark came wide open 20 yards on an end route. Ribbon should have come off the play action post and went to the post end. Second down and 10. Down at the 27-yard line. Tackle made by Rod Jones as they continue to work with Daryl Green. Working on his left wrist, it looks like, Terry, now. Well, the doctor's putting his hand down in the navicular area, so 
I mean, this is a hor this is this isn't a, a terrible collision. Not only is his leg hurting him, as you can see him double over, but they're grabbing his wrist. He's in a lot of pain. Third and three. Redskins three of nine on third down conversion so far. Sanders starts in motion. They hand it off to Riggs. Ernest Biner instead, number 21. And he's got the first down, Washington. Biner's second carry of the ball game for nine yards. Picked up from Cleveland. And he's been a big help to the Redskins this year. 435 to go, third quarter. Washington came in three and three. They have dominated this game. The only Tampa Bay touchdown came on a block punt return for TD by Ricky Reynolds. Riggs. Flag down. This one might come back. It will. You can see Riggs shaking his head. First big run. Holding 66 offense. First down. Whoops, that was Joe Jacoby. Not a happy trooper. But anytime you get a big run like that, of course you hate to know you got a penalty on it. That's what Jacoby's upset about. We've, they finally get a big shot up the middle, and then they get a holding on it, calling Jacoby for holding. Jacoby, Mark May, Jeff Bostic, Russ Grimm, and Jim Lachey. They have been a dominant factor in this ball game against the Tampa Bay defensive line and linebackers today. First and 20. Reverse Art Monk with Griffin in front. And what a block Griffin got. Oh He'll brag about it to his children. He knocked Mark Robinson backwards as he came around the right side. Second reverse that we've seen today. Biner goes in motion, draws no one with him. But the linebacker, Kevin Murphy, 59, he's down inside. And now Grip Griffin is leading the way. Number 11 gets a heck of a shot on Bobby Futrell, 36. But <laughs> Futrell said, there's no way this guy's going to block me. He spins off and makes a tackle. But great effort by Rippon. Meanwhile, they helped Daryl Green to a stretcher at the Redskin bench. That was not good news. Riggs up the middle to the 11-yard line. Darrell Green, the all-pro cornerback. Out of Texas A&R and Houston, his hometown. About to be taken into the Redskin locker room. Meanwhile, third and one. And again, they do not make it on third and one. Isn't that unusual for a team of this? talent to have that kind of problem on third down and short. Well, you have to believe that there's not much much diversification in the offense by the Redskins because the Tampa Bay team seems to know exactly where they're going with the football and they stop them every time. So you change it up. Maybe you go four wide. Maybe you do something different. If there's an offense that is extremely multiple, it would be the Redskin offense. But what we've seen is everything has just been off tackle, off tackle, off tackle. They will go for it on fourth and one. I wouldn't be surprised if they play action and threw the ball here, Vern. It's Riggs. He's got the first down. Still was a good idea, Jerry. <laughs> well, when you've had very little success or none, no success on third and one, why not? And we've seen Gibbs do it. So why not take a chance and, and try it? But 
Good call there outside wide. Notice it wasn't inside. That play went wide, still down inside, and then take the back out wide. The Tampa Bay defense has had no help at all from their offense, and you've got to believe that with the Hogs coming at them, with this big offensive line pounding down them, these big backs coming at them, that now they have to start, they have to be getting tired. Ricks. easy. Touchdown. Flags are down, we'll check them. gets in behind the back and just follows the tackles and the guards. It's a good job by everyone there. They just moved that the right side of the Tampa Bay defense. They just moved them back and that made it an easy job for Ricks to get in the end zone. Five yard touchdown run for Gerald Riggs. 29 to 7, 29 on answer points. Sunday on CBS, an NFL doubleheader for you. It all starts with the NFL Today live at 12.30 Eastern. And most of you will see the Rams battle the Chicago Bears. Dallas takes on Phoenix, and Tampa Bay will be at Cincinnati. Then in game two of our CBS doubleheader, Terry and I will be in Denver as John Elway and the Broncos host Randall Cunningham's Philadelphia Eagles. Some of you will see the Redskins on the West Coast against the Raiders or San Francisco as they go on the road again against the New York Jets. That's next Sunday. There was, by the way, a personal foul on the touchdown against Tampa Bay that was assessed on the kickoff. So Low Miller kicks off from the 50, and it'll be a touchback and come back out to the 20-yard line. Benny Testaverde, 5 of 17 for 81 yards. Looks very uncertain today and has been intercepted a couple of times. A.J. Johnson is in the lineup. Here's Mark Carrier with a quick strike out to the 37-yard line. Tackle made by Todd Bowles. They are X-raying the left knee and the left wrist of Daryl Green in the Redskin locker room. We'll pass on news from the locker room as soon as we get it. 17-yard gain on the last play. Final 45 seconds, third quarter. It's been a Washington show since the opening moments of the ball game. And the pass caught on the right side by Mark Carrier. One of the things that you might see, Byrne, is an adjustment by the Redskins. Is now with green out. At, at the cornerback spot, he always covers or the fastest or the most dangerous receiver. As the case bid today, it was number 84, Green, Bruce, I mean Bruce Hill. Now with him out, we might see, we might see on behalf of the Redskins, less man coverage because they have such a big lead and more zones. And if you see the zones, then I would expect Testaverde now to have the time to go ahead and attack, hit the little seams, a little quick slants, and little, maybe possibly some screens. A.J. Johnson has taken Darrell Green's spot. Clips. Play fake. Mark Carrier, that's a Tampa Bay first down across the 50. Brian Davis with the tackle. And for Mark Carrier, his fifth catch, 46 yards. The final play of the third quarter.
That's the end of the quarter with our score. Washington 29, Tampa Bay 7. We now pause for a word from your local station. Sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? The good time, great taste of McDonald's. And by Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered for real draft taste. So tap in to the cold. RFK Stadium in the nation's capital. The Redskins comfortably on top as we begin the fourth quarter. Vern Lundquist, Terry Bradshaw here with Tampa Bay looking for some kind of offensive spark. They trail by 22. Lars Tate starts in motion wide to the left side. Destiverti back, chased by Manley. Blocked by Mark Carrier, number 88. One of the things that young football teams are going to have to do, Burn, young, good football teams, and this is a very good football team, not playing that way right now. But this is a very good football team. They're going to have to learn how to win on the road against good football teams. The Washington Redskins are three and three. Could be, you know, everybody says five and one, six and oh. So could these Tampa Bay teams. They could very easily be five and one. They're not playing like that now. Second down and ten, Tampa Bay. They have only four first downs in the ball game. It'll be third and ten. Brian Davis, number 34. That's just good coverage. Brian Davis has been much maligned. And Odessa Turner last week, the touchdown pass to him that, that cost uh, the Redskins that game. But the corners today, I'm, I got to say, hats off to them. These guys have done a whale of a job. And the pressure by the ends, of Manley and Mann have just come, you know, they've been gung-ho today. So they came out with a purpose. Maybe that meeting they had wins, they really had paid some uh, major dividends. Third and 10. Shotgun. Charles Mann comes after Testaverde. Mark Carrier has the first down plus. Foot race toward the end zone. And he is hauled out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Martin Mayhew, number 35 made the tackle well carrier will be, get the glory on this but i i happen to know for a fact that vinnie testaverde threw this with a bullet with people in his face and backpedaling and he gunned this baby down there and carrier who is a good a good route runner has good speed not the speed burner that ray perkins wants in his lineup david peoples is that man but he has been injured and has just come back off injured reserve but give a lot of credit that time to testaverde and his arm strength Gain of 38. First and goal for the 10. Left side. Incomplete. And the pass was there. That was intended for Danny Peebles, the rookie from North Carolina State. Don't plant your left foot when you're throwing to the left. Automatically, your body's momentum will pull the ball away from a receiver when you throw a sideline pattern. Testaverde did not plant his left foot. He swung it open and threw the football, and the momentum of his body pulled the ball away from the receiver. Tampa Bay on first and goal, 10 possessions, seven touchdowns, one field goal, one takeover on downs. That made a lot of sense to me. I certainly hope it was right. Oh, absolutely. I would not mislead you. I didn't think so. Testaverde, right side, caught, taped. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Well, how's that? Not bad, huh? You got to believe you can do things, and if you put it in your mind that you can do it, you can do it. And that time, Testaverde took his team down the field and scored, and it's all part of the mind matter. You got to believe you can do it, and then you got to want to get it done, no matter where you are, who you're playing. Tate out of the backfield, out in the flat. Good read by Vinny then. Saw everyone drop in off, saw the linebacker was covering. That's Wilbur Marshall, 58. No way he can cover a back when he's trailing. Good job by both receiver and quarterback. That is the first touchdown catch for Lars Tate this year. Only his fifth catch of the season. Donald Igwe Buike with the extra point. So a 38-yard catch by Carrier from Testaverde sets up a five-yard touchdown toss.
Thus far, Tampa Bay with one yard rushing. The Redskins 132. Special teams, Ricky Reynolds with a blocked punt return for a touchdown. And Mark Griffin has been very much in control with nearly 200 yards passing, two touchdowns. On the sideline, Monty Coleman getting wrapped. And bad news for the Washington Redskins. Daryl Green, we now are told, has been taken to the hospital to check that left wrist and the left knee problem. That really could, in, in, in a long-term sense, really affect the Redskins defensively, Terry. Right, because what he does, when you have a Daryl Green in the game, you can put him on one receiver and know that he's the best cover man in the National Football League. With him out now, you have to bring in another man, and to give that person help takes away from another another area on the football field. So he, in effect, you know, allows you to do other things with your coverage, and you don't have to worry about him. Oh, look at this! Onside kick. And recovered, I believe. And James Wilder, the old man of the Tampa Bay team, comes in on special teams. Out of the University of Missouri, when you come into the National Football League, you start out on special teams. And when you're at the end of your career and you want to help your football team, you go back on special teams. And this is Wilder. Look at his eyes inside. Knows the ball's coming his way. The perfect bounce. Sees it. Look at that. Concentration. Up in the air, I mean, we're talking perfect there. Look at that. That is a perfect onside kick. Excellent. James Wilder, who is one of the great players in Tampa Bay history, now will back up a couple of returns last year, uh, last week, a couple of tackles on special teams. And this time, makes the onside recovery. The Pro Bowl veteran from 84. Gets the birdie back. Carrier. 17-yard gain. Now you see the concern on Joe Gibbs' face because now all of a sudden, isn't it amazing that all of a sudden now we see Tampa Bay with the confidence and now Testa Verde doesn't look like anything we've saw for two and a half quarters. Now he's standing in there. Now he's throwing the football. Now his offensive line has given him ample time to throw. What does Washington do? They blitzed him earlier. He hit the big blitz pickup. And this is where you play football. He was 5 of 17 in, th in the third quarter. He's hit six of his last nine. Here's the audible. Blitz coming. Reads it and goes left. Bruce Hill out of bounds at the 30-yard line. If you put two wide receivers to the same side of the field and only bring two receivers, defenders over to cover, then a quarterback has to audible and take advantage of the man-for-man -man situation, go to the slot guy, take the outside receiver, run that guy off and throw them to the slot, and then use the outside receiver as a blocker. And that's exactly what Testaverde did. Excellent job that time audible. Vinny Testaverde now 12 of 27 for 195 yards. First and 10 at the 20. 29 14 with nearly the entire fourth quarter remaining. Three step drop. Slant pattern. Touchdown, Bruce Hill. Bruce Hill would have been covered by Daryl Green. But now with Daryl Green out, Barry Wilburn, a safety, not a cornerback. You always bring corners up on slot people. Now it's Barry Wilburn, a safety. He has to cover what the Redskins think is the best receiver for Tampa Bay, and that's 84, Bruce Hill. He gets inside of Barry Wilburn. Beautiful throw by Testa Verde. Once again, oh, that's... That's a... A.J. Johnson. Yes, that's A.J. Johnson. The extra point is good, just like that. Didn't take long. Alabama's 10th ranked Tide of Crimson rolls into Beaver Stadium to face Paterno and Penn State Pop on a five-game winning streak next Saturday on CBS Sports. Barry Wilburn, who was in on the nickel, but really did not have prime responsibility for Bruce Hill. Yeah, I saw the 45, and I want to get that clear real quick, because I know how important it is for these guys to 
to make the right plays and then get credit for him. But Wilburn wasn't the man. It was A.J. Johnson, number 47, that time that Bruce Hill beat on the quick slant. Your point, however, Terry, is that Daryl Green would have been covering exactly. him. Exactly, right. Daryl Green would have been on uh, Bruce Hill. He would have had him man for man. He'd been covering him all day. And when he talked to us, he told us yesterday that, yes, I'm going to cover Hill. That's the guy we fear the most. Igwe Buke, who kicked the onside kick recovered by Wilder. Last time, this time, goes deep. A.J. Johnson. And a flag is down. Tackle made by Pete Majerian. And again, James Wilder, number 32, in on special teams. Isn't that amazing? Wilder, a, a guy in 84, was a pro bowl, holds all the records, and does anything to help a young team win. Put me on the special teams, and Ray Perkins said that'd be the guy to watch. He's an old guy, he's the guy to watch. Holding for 54 on the receiving team, first down. Bouvier, Kurt. That's Kurt Gavea. Here's Wilder and Gavea getting tangled up with each other. Okay, there's Wilder trying to use his hands on Gavea, and then you see a great takedown. That's beautiful. Hands up inside, just like a linebacker's dog. Now, from the eight-yard line, first and ten, and the Buccaneers very much back in this ballgame. Griffin hands it off up the middle to Riggs. He gains one. One of the one of the things I would hate to do, Vernon, I would I would hate to give a young team like Tampa Bay a, a young team that man can play excellent football. I would remember the Chicago Bear game and know that these guys can play football. I would hate to give them life. And right now, what I what I see is is momentum has swapped sides and is now with Tampa Bay. And now we're looking at Washington. They've got to get it back. Jones knocks him down at the 14-yard line. Gary Clark with two touchdown catches today. And a big third down coming up now. Miami leads Green Bay by 14. Buffalo over the Jets. Cincinnati hangs on to a three-point edge over the Colts. And Houston burying Pittsburgh thus far. Philadelphia over the Raiders and Kansas City about to hand Dallas its seventh straight loss. Third and four, 29-21, with 12.40 to go in the ballgame. Clark, first down at the 20-yard line. Donnie Elder with the tackle. center Sanders in motion you saw his feet in a semi rollout all this is designed for this is a throwback to Clark all the way send everyone to the right and then turn around and throw back this is one of those tiny pieces of minutia that has nothing to do with the outcome of this game but I just noticed Joe Bostic puts his thumb on the laces just like Randy Grimes does you're very observant I noticed that too First down from the 20. It must be something about the thumb on the laces. Uh huh. Huh? But Mike Webster, you said, had his fingers on the laces. Oh, absolutely. When you played. Always. Fingers on the laces. Everyone I've ever taken a snap from has always had the fingers on the latest. Notice, notice the thumb. Once again, the thumb is on the laces. I'm going to write a little letter here, a little note to myself, and now I'm going to check every center we cover this year and see how many of them put their thumb on the laces to snap the ball. Second down and eight, 11.22 to go this ball game. Hand off left side. Riggs to the 25-yard line. This is what you want to do. If you have the ability to run the football and you've just given team new life and they're, they've just come back to cut the score to eight points, you're only leading by eight points and you can run the football, now is the time to run the football and eat the clock up. No secret here. What the Redskins want to do is just three and four and five yards a pop and take it all the way down and score. 10.45 remaining. 
third and four. Biner can't hang on. Winston Moss chasing Ernest Biner in the pass just out of his reach. It'll be fourth down. who did not punt most of this week because of an injured left ankle. That is on his kicking foot. He is back for the punt here. That's a dandy. Willie Drury to the 33-yard line. 50-yard punt. Eight on the return. Ralph Mojenko. Thing looked like it was going in orbit. It was sideways, wasn't it? Most points allowed in the fourth quarter. The Redskins have allowed 55 in the fourth quarter this year, trailing only Phoenix and Miami. In week two, Terry and I were here when the Philadelphia Eagles scored 21 in the fourth quarter to defeat the Redskins 42-37. And now Tampa Bay tries to come back. They trailed at one point 29 to 7. It's 29-21. Mix up. Wilburn, the closest man to it. Just to give you a recap of how we got here, that seven points by Tampa in the first quarter. Ricky Reynolds with a blocked punt return. Redskins a field goal, safety and a touchdown, and quarter number two had a halftime lead. Then 17 in a row on a field goal and two Gary Clark touches in the third quarter. But now Testaverde has hit Lars Tate and Bruce Hill with touchdowns in quarter number four. And it's 29-21. Across the middle, William Howard to the 40-yard line. That's short of the first down. It'll be third and three. You know, the Tampa Bay team, as you look at Joe, Offensive coach, offensive coach, assistant head coach of the Redskins talking to Rippon, but I noticed one of the interesting things now for the Tampa Bay team, Bert, is that they have two, they have Swain and Batch, two backup start players in the offensive line. Bruin and Simmons out with injuries. Into the flat, oh. hit the way, Davis. Brian Davis got in front of Bruce Hill. Buccaneers will punt. Joe Howard back to return Chris Moore's effort. Testaverde and Bruce Hill chat about what went wrong. Down by the Buccaneers at the 25-yard line. 9.28 to go at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. The Redskins lead it by eight. Classic Craig Morton and running Roger Staubach once shared the quarterbacking chores for Dallas. In a 1971 game, Coach Tom Landry tried an unusual scheme. He had Morton and Staubach actually alternate on every play. A unique arrangement that took advantage of their individual talents and helped make the Dallas Cowboys the best they can be. They go in the ball game and the conversation continues on the sideline. It grew somewhat animated. Ray Perkins and Vinny Testaverde. Not that Ray Perkins is ever going to be accused of being the most animated conversationalist you'll encounter. But he and Testaverde, in a quiet sort of way, are talking about things. First down and 10, Washington, 9.28 to go. Redskins had a 29 to 7 lead that is now only eight points, 29 21. High formation. Riggs tests the right tackle spot where Joe Jacoby prowls. 
John Cannon makes the tackle number 78 who is in there now another of the better as a matter of fact Cannon and James Wilder are the only two Tampa Bay Buccaneers who have ever played the Washington Redskins this is only the third time these two teams have met once in 77 once in 82 and Cannon and James Wilder the only two who are on that 82 team second and eight Sanders is out Clark and Monk will be the wide receivers 48 to go in the game. Here David pumps once and goes deep for Clark. And overthrows him as Rod Jones did a pretty good defensive job. Well, Rod Jones did an excellent job. There was a flag down, but Jones took the pump by Rip and he took the pump. And when we were talking earlier about it, look for the pump and go later, but he took the pump and then he did an outstanding job of coming back and catching up with Clark, but the ball was barely overthrown. Lucky for him. Illegal use of the hands, number 51, defense, first down. Roderick Thomas. Thomas coming in on Lachey. Illegal use of the hands by Thomas. So we're... Well, I guess it's up in the face mask, but it looked to me like Lachey had his hands up defending himself. And it looks to me like, like Broderick Thomas took his hands and pushed Lachey's hands back in his face mask. Kind of picky there. That's good for a first down. It's first and 10 with 841 to go in the game. Sanders in motion. Rotating defensive secondary. Hand off to Riggs. Bounces to the outside and gets to the 35-yard line. Winston Moss with the tackle. There is the Redskin defensive unit, Dexter Manley. Interesting, one of those tiny things you never really think about in, in, in how teams sit when they're not playing but there's a designated area Terry for the defense and the offense here in Washington it's to the right behind the head coach Gibbs it's to the right and the offense is all to the left that way if they need someone they turn around right or left and they should be right there waiting on them that is the defensive bench for the Redskins under eight minutes to go in the ball game Ripping three-step drop right side oh. Ricky Reynolds comes up and nails Gary Clark. When you you got to expect zones if you're a Washington Redskin quarterback, and the reason is, if you're Tampa, you know the Redskins are going to try to run the football, and the way you stop the run is with support of your corners or your safeties. And the only way you can do that is to get into zones. If you get into man coverage, then you have a tendency to get beat. That time the zone, and look, Ricky Reynolds is an outstanding cornerback. I mean an outstanding cornerback. Throw the hitch, throw the hitch. Yeah, I'll give it to you, give it to you, but I'm going to pound that receiver, and that's exactly what he did. Dying defense in on third. And two. Draw play, Ernest Viner darts for what looks to be the first down. He might have enough. And that'll buy more time for the Washington Redskins. Yeah, you just want to take your time. If Rippon should just get in there, take the place from the sideline, get in the huddle, keep his eyes on the look at the 30 second clock, 28, 27. All right, here's the play. Nice and easy, no problem. We're not going to audible regardless. Go up to the line of scrimmage, take your time, 18 seconds. Everybody must have a lot of patience. 6.30 to go in the game. First down, crosses the 50. Interesting, a week ago, the New York Giants ran out the final three minutes plus on this Redskin team. And now, the Redskins hoping to do just the same. Ball control in the final few minutes, and we're down to the six-minute mark now. 29-21. Washington, they had a 12-7 lead at the half. Extended that to 29 to 7 to see Tampa Bay come back with two fourth quarter touchdowns. Second and two. Riggs, Eugene Marr, number 99, met him. But that should be enough for a fresh set of downs for Washington. Herschel Walker, by the way, had a touchdown in that Minnesota game. Buffalo with a big lead over the Jets, and Indianapolis has now taken a lead over Cincinnati. 
Houston continues to dominate Pittsburgh. Philadelphia with a three-point edge over the Raiders. And Kansas City with a big, big lead over Dallas, 36-14. First down and 10, Washington, 5-0-5 to go in the game. Play fake, ripping. with eight catches Ricky Reynolds number 29 you know you, you're seeing this completion and with the corners off so much you know you you say well what a fine job by Monk and it is and a good job by Rippon but once again on short passes the guys that really have to do the job is the offensive lineman now, here's what the fans are hollering about there's Reynolds making the stop now the play's dead and now the little extra there and the of course, being here in Washington, they didn't particularly like that. <laughs> Ricky put his hands up, said, no, 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 it wasn't intentional. Yeah. Four, 15 to go. Draw play. Biner got some room. It's a gain of 25 yards. This is the first counter gap we've seen today, Vern. Counter gap trap to the left. The right guard and right tackle pulling the lead out. There's Jacoby, the right tackle, doing a good job. Got his man, knocked, few, knocked the uh, strong safety down, and then Viner gets downfield for a big first down. But that's the first time today that I've actually seen the counter trap run and run very well. Already five minutes and 40 seconds consumed on this drive. Riggs at the 15-yard line, 320 remaining in the ball game. When you watch the Washington Redskins offensive line blocking scheme, you virtually see two types. Number one is the counter trap. The other is just the slant blocking or zone block where they just get in someone's face, give the ball to the back, and then say, you find the hole. That's pretty much it. Not very complicated. Five or six running plays, and that's it. Tampa Bay has used a timeout to stop the clock with 317 remaining. That's one of their three. And they still trail by eight. Coming up tonight on CBS, when they arrested Joyce Ann Brown for murder, did they get the wrong woman? You decide tonight on 60 Minutes. That's followed by Murder, she wrote. Then on the CBS Sunday movie, do you know the Muffin Man, starring Pam Dauber, John Shea, and Anthony Geary. That's all tonight on CBS. Gerald Riggs now with 95 yards. He had that huge game against Philadelphia when he was over 200 in week number two. But the last few weeks, he's rushed for 60, 50, and 26 before coming back with 91 yards last week. And he's on the verge of a 100-yard effort this afternoon. Second and 10, 317 remaining in the game. Now it stops and breaks out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Sherman Kokroff, number 25, forces him out. Yeah, that's not that's not exactly where Gibbs would like to see Riggs run. He, he doesn't want to see him run wide. If, if Riggs is running wide, you got to believe that 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 is a good job that time by the Tampa defense. But if Riggs squares his shoulders and turns up inside, then you got to say, hey, that's good stuff. That's what that's what Gibbs likes to see Riggs do. But when he goes wide, he loses his power. He's not turned up, and it makes it easier to stop him. Third and six with 3:12 to go. Now you've got man coverage. There's your motion, someone covering you. Ricky Sanders. They go for Sanders, right side, can't hang on. Fourth down. Rippin bumped and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Mark Robinson, the strong safety, lined up at the end that time. It was man coverage, it was a safety blitz, and by Robinson blitzing, no one picking him up, didn't allow Rippin enough time to get set and throw the ball accurately. Low Miller on for the field goal. Made them 33 and 42. This will be from 29 yards out. Second round draft choice from 1986 out of Minnesota. That might be the margin. 
makes it an 11 point game. The Buccaneers now need two touchdowns. 32 21 with 304 to go in the ball game. Terry, that's a really impressive drive by Washington. Well, it's exactly what they needed to do, Vern. You, you have an offensive line that you can, that can block the run, and you have an offensive line that can protect for the passing. And gosh, it's just a perfect situation. I, it's just a perfect situation. These guys are outstanding players, and if you can run the football in the fourth quarter with a lead, man, then you can win a lot of football games. Six minutes and 24 seconds, run off the clock, 63 yards in 11 plays. Plus a field goal. Look right. at that. See, that's, that's the name of the game. The thing that made the Steelers so great in the, in the 70s, Vern, was that we could run the football in the fourth quarter when we had to to preserve a win. In a lot of cases, we could, we could do it and get a field goal or get a touchdown to win the football game. But if you can run the football, man, if you can run the football in, in today's time against offenses that are explosive such as Tampa Bay's and then you've got the plus and the Redskins they've got it all they just they're three and three and that's not that's not enough right now they have lost twice to the Giants and once to Philadelphia and they're on the West Coast next week against the Raiders as they chase New York Donnie Elder with the return for the Buccaneers cut down as he gets to the 22 yard line and Terry Orr and Reggie Branch celebrate it was Reggie Branch who made the tackle and Greg Minuski was also a part of it. A flag is down. <laughs> Penalty will be marked off against Tampa Bay. Illegal block in the back. Number 47 on the receiving team. First down. Don Smith. Young kid that was a quarterback at Mississippi State and came to Tampa and Ray Perkins loved him, loved him a lot, thought he would make an outstanding running back, turned him over, got hurt, and, and laid out a year, but Smith is a young man that was called there. Vinny Testaverde now 14 to 31 for 223 yards. Two interceptions today. He's been sacked twice and thrown two touchdowns. And both of those two touchdown tosses came here in the fourth quarter, but now he's got to get two more. Oh, that's a mess. Look at this. Hall left. Everybody's crossing. <laughs> Meanwhile, the 45-second clock has five seconds left. They do get the play snap. Deep in the middle, Bruce Hill caught. Oh, was he taken down. Sandwiched. Alvin Walton and Todd Bowles. That's just great reaction. Testa Verde was intercepted earlier on this same route, but he gets rid of the ball and he gets the ball a little higher. Notice he gets set five steps and now the ball down the middle. The good throw over one, over one back, but then a collision right in between two. The ball right in his hands, but you can't blame him for turning that one loose. It was Walton and Bowles, the safeties, who had the meeting at Bruce Hill. You know, the worst thing about this pass is Monday or Tuesday whenever Tampa gets home and looks at the tapes of this game and you have to sit with those receivers and then explain to them by looking them in their eyes and say, here's why I led you <laughs> into double coverage. I want to apologize for your ribs hanging out of your skin. I mean, you really feel terrible. You don't know what to do, but you're trying to make something happen. And that's a good throw, excellent throw. It's just great reaction by the secondary, and Hill did an excellent job of trying to hang on, but wasn't able to. Obviously okay as he walks off. Kerwin Bell standing with his right. Final now. The Eagles hang on and defeat the Raiders by a count of 10 to 7. And that's the way the standings now look. Of course, the Giants play later this afternoon. Philadelphia goes to 5 and 2. The Giants are at San Diego. Washington trying to stay within two and maybe one of the lead. And they face the Raiders next week in Los Angeles. That pass caught by Danny Peoples. And he's got a first down out of the 45-yard line. I'm sitting here licking my chops because I knew exactly what Washington was doing. When they put a linebacker out over the slot, I knew it was a two-deep zone, and the place to go is the post in over the middle, and that's exactly what Testaverde did. Excellent job. Danny Peebles with a catch. This time he goes left, has a man open. They did not get out of bounds. 
So the clock continues to run with 2.15 to go, and Dexter Manley and Charles Mann knock Testaverde down. Yeah, Drew is over there arguing. Forget the arguing. You don't want to argue now. You want to get up, get the play, and run. We'll argue when the game's over with. May not get another play before the two-minute warning. They will not. So the Buccaneers do have a first down, but they've got only two minutes left, and they need two touchdowns to get the lead. Ball game. Harry Swain. And at offensive guard, again, to the two starting guards for Tampa Bay out in the uh, first half, Mike yep. Simmons and John Bruin. Yeah, and one thing you can find out about your team depth-wise is how, how well Swain and Bax are going to play. And, and in this crucial fourth quarter, they played extremely well. Testaverde's had to throw the ball, and, and they've given him time to throw. And the one word that comes back is, is toughness. And I go back to what Testaverde told us. The, the mental toughness has played a major part in him coming around here in the second half. He had five of 17 at one point before we started this quarter. Man with pressure again. Danny Peebles at the 12-yard line. Clarence Vaughn with a tackle. Peebles kicks out of the tackle. Peoples is the burner. That's the one that Perkins said. This is the guy that stretches the defense. This is the guy that can really fly. And this is the guy we need to get into our offense. But he's been hurt. Now he's back. Bucks do have two timeouts left. Just Birdie. Did Wilder make the catch? Yes, or was he did. Draft? It, it is a catch at the four-yard line. James Wilder with the grab. And now they will use one of their timeouts. They'll have one left. That's the second as Vinny Testaverde heads over to the Tampa Bay sideline. 122 remaining. The, the, if there's one major improvement or one major change that's happened, notice that Testaverde is showing timeout. Did I waste my time out here? But the thing that has happened is he is such a grasp of this offense. He has come so far in his knowledge of the offense that he is now more controlled at the line of scrimmage. He is now has the ability and the freedom that this guy Perkins gives him to go ahead and make changes at the line of scrimmage. And he and he's doing that two timeouts left. That's not a bad call. He felt like he didn't have enough time to get his players to the line of scrimmage and go ahead and call a play better off to call a timeout. There's Mark Griffin and Gary Clark. They've teamed up for two touchdowns today in the second half. Gary Clark has caught 10 for 73. Monk with eight catches. Sanders with four as Griffin has found his uh, three outstanding receivers. Second down. Testaverde. Chased by Manley. Tipped away by Anthony Johnson. A.J. Johnson who is replacing the injured Daryl Green. And if you join us late, Daryl Green, the All-Pro, taking to the hospital in this half with wrist and leg injuries. A.J. Johnson. 47 Johnson beat early in the right of your screen, coming inside of Carrier. Right hand is on the back of Carrier, uses the left hand. Nothing wrong with that. Just good coverage. Third and two from the four. Deep left side. Mark Carrier. Beautiful job. And the great thing about the route by Carrier is notice the separation he gives himself. He came inside from the sideline, gave himself plenty of room to run back out. Down inside goes people. Now to the outside. Notice he came in, went out. Johnson had no idea where the ball was, and at the last minute, Carrier puts his hands up and makes the grab. Beautiful route by this young man. Mark Carrier from Nichols State. And they are... Tie goes to the receiver, first possession. Investigating this in the replay booth. All right, right to your screen, folks. Let's check it out. Testaverde gets up. Nice spiral, pretty good-looking stuff right there. There's the catch. There's your catch. Left foot, right foot. Now the steal attempt. Sorry. Nice job. Won't work. Touchdown. Yeah, I can't be any question about that. You know it's coming. You know the fade's coming. You even think maybe motion, maybe the picks, all those illegal things, but just come inside and go outside. Now you ask yourself the question, had they had the Tampa Bay team converted on third and fourth? After further review, the 
play will stand is called touchdown. You know, the third and four back on the 25-yard line, if they convert that, who knows what we would have here. Maybe a little, a little too later. Now we can expect another onside kick. Carrier makes the catch. Igwe Fuike with the extra point out of Chris Moore's hold. Up and good. And there was an interesting little tiny scene on the sideline just before the kick with Wayne Severe and Joe Gibbs side by side. Severe, the special teams coach, explaining to Joe Gibbs what he expected in the onside attempt to this forthcoming. There's Severe, the gray-headed gentleman. And Richie Pettibone talks it over with Joe Gibbs, too. Mark Carrier from Tampa Bay, along with Charles Mann from Washington, have been chosen our Miller Lite players of the game and qualify for Player of the Week honors. A $1,000 donation will be made by the Miller Brewing Company on behalf of the players to United Cerebral Palsy. Mark Carrier with eight catches for 106 yards and the touchdown and Charles Mann a force defensively. Uh, for Charles Mann, a lot of times you don't look at sacks and things like that, but the thing, he was so disruptive, took two people to block him all day, coming down inside early in the game, forcing Tessa Verde to throw off the wrong leg. Just did a tremendous job of busting things up and had a whale of a game. I feel pretty vociferous about my choice of him, too, Vern. <laughs> you feel vociferous, huh? Onside kicks so far this year. 17 attempts and four have been recovered. That is up to date and includes the last onside kick that James Wilder got off the foot of Dan Donald Iguaguita. You know what's a real good onside kick? Had the kicker, Donald, kick it straight ahead and protect it and then fall on it. That one recovered, and a flag is down back at the 33. It is recovered, however, by Art Monk. And there's where that special teams alignment comes in. They got those guys with the sure hands up on the line in expectation of the fun of the onside kick. Offsides, number 85 on the kicking team. Penalty is declined. First down. Doug Williams behind Dexter Manley. And it would appear the Washington Redskins are going to go four and three. And on the Tampa Bay sideline, Vinny Testaverde, 19 of 38 for 311 yards, and most of that came in the final quarter. Bucks can stop it just one more time. We have 111 remaining. Tampa Bay falls to three and four. And the Buccaneers use their final timeout, 69 seconds to go in the ballgame. Coming up next, the NFL Today postgame show with scores and highlights. Brent and Irv back in our New York studios on the seventh weekend of the 1989 NFL season. This uh, turned out to be a heck of a game here, and there were a lot of good ones. Philadelphia barely edging the Raiders today. Yeah, you would have thought that would have been a high offensive score. Yeah. Evidential, evidently, since Shale has taken over the Raiders, they've gotten that new toughness that he was talking about in Philadelphia uh, with Randall uh, Cunningham, the most exciting quarterback in the National Football League. Their offense has not uh, been as consistent, I'm sure, in the last few weeks as Buddy Ryan would like. So there are some surprises. Cole Croft looking on. Redskins go to the West Coast next week. They are in Los Angeles to take on the Raiders. And the Giants, as we said, face San Diego later this afternoon. There's Darrell Grant. Good game. I tell you, the tackles for the Redskins. Grant played a rocker. Rocker coming in played extremely well. Kevin Murphy wasn't expected to play today. Only needs a half a sack to tie the team record for, for sacks by linebackers at six and a half. So... First chance to see the young Buck team, Vernon. First time we have had since yeah. last year. Very and they are improved. This will be the final play of the ball game. Mark Rippin. 
kneels and then gets up, and the Washington Redskins hold off the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the first meeting between the two here. 29 to 7 going into the fourth quarter. It winds up a Redskin victory, but just by four points, 32 28. As Rippon throws for two touchdowns, 24 of 36 for 221 yards. Testaverde throws for 311 yards. He had three touchdown tosses today. And Tampa Bay on the ground, just a footnote to this ball game, but they wind up with one yard rushing. One. But they uh, didn't need the rush in the final quarter as they were trying to come back. They had to go to the air, and Testaverde did bring them back uh, to within four. 